Hey everyone, welcome to the Beyond Extent podcast, a podcast dedicated to a chat between two environment artists discussing everything about the industry we work in. I'm Timothy and I'm joined by William, who is a friend and fellow colleague of mine. In this episode, we're taking a deep dive into some portfolio tips, discussing how to get people's attention, what makes for good thumbnails, what are some good tricks for presentation, and what you want to do with your portfolio in general. Really crucial information for people trying to get into the industry or are preparing to get into the industry. So let's dive in. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Beyond Extent podcast and this is number 19. We're flying, man. So we're, we're back here together with uh, a good friend of mine, William. You probably heard him by now. Hello. And uh, I'm your host, Timothy. So, Hello. how are you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'm feeling happy. Feeling happy? I'm feeling, I'm feeling happy and um, and I know it and I uh, will clap my hands. Well, yeah, this is like your weekly routine, right? Just play Tarkov until dead in the morning, then just go straight to your happy zone. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I went to bed at 9 p.m. last night. Oh, yeah. We're like 60 years old already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I had my dinner at 4. Yeah. <laughs> then I watched the news. Watched the news, yeah. <laughs> and then I went to bed. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, I might look like 60 years old, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> not quite, yeah. Uh, so, uh... Today, I know we, we discussed it before already, but uh, today we're going to be diving into some portfolio tips, actually. Uh, we were, were planning to do um, like a, a showcase of our first portfolio, how we got into the industry, um, but we, we still need some more time to figure out the logistics behind that. So, um, yeah, keep an eye on that in the future. But um, yeah, in preparation of that, we want to go over some... Yeah, portfolio tips and just hopefully give people some some stuff to think about when they're actually building their work and building their portfolio. Um, so do you want to start with like a point that you want to bring up? What do you think is most important for people building their portfolio? Good question. So first of all, um, you have to realize <clears throat> you have to realize how important your like the portfolio in itself is. I think uh, most people understand that by now. You know, like it's 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 such a big thing um, that everyone says that that people kind of are aware of it now. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, just to make sure that everyone is aware, the portfolio is that's you, literally to people, to uh, to people like uh, like recruiters or or like a lead artist that will look at your application, that's the first thing they're going to look at probably. You know, maybe you have a nice cover letter. Eh, doesn't really matter that much. What what matters is that you have a portfolio that will be unique and just show what you can do, and that's that's what's going to always grab the attention of someone. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not gonna be your, yeah, your nice cover letter or your, even your like CV. Like the CV is good if you have like if you have some good stuff in there. Like oh, I did an internship here or whatever. But yeah, portfolio is what counts. So I think that's that's uh, um, a really important thing to like, uh, like as a mindset to have when you go in. You know, yeah, this is this is me. This is how I'm presenting myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and th that's that's such a big one, especially um, showing off what you want to do, because yes, a, a exactly. lot of people come out of um, come out of school, and they have this fairly generic portfolio that fits into like all the other people's work from that same school. But it's yeah, you mean like they did like one character and one prop and one yeah yeah like yeah. The, yeah yeah yeah. So like you you can. At some point, if you're looking at students' portfolios, you can really see what school they come from. Because they all right, have yeah. like, oh, in the second year they did this, and in the third year they did this. 
and it's really noticeable. So it's it's kind of thinking ahead and thinking about how you want to stand out and how you make you want to how you make yourself unique. Yes, that's a really big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just and being I, unique. Yeah, and I think a lot of people underestimate that fact. Like they they just they just go through school and then they kind of expect to get a job on the get go or like once once they're done with it. But it's I feel with with the competition out there you always have to go that one step further and just take it that one extra step to really make your work stand out. Yeah. And, and that's... Yeah, yeah go on. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's not just like standing out quality-wise, right? It's also just standing out from a from the topics or like the, 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 the stuff that you make. Mm -hmm. If it's something different, like, I mean... There's so many examples of this, right? That there's a tutorial of, like, for example, Tim Burkholz's <laughs> AKM tutorial, yep. <laughs> which uh, was like, I, I, I did it. I mm -hmm. loved it. It's, it's a great tutorial. But um, there's thousands of these AKs on ArtStation. Yep. And um, you're not going to get a job with it. I can already tell you, if you have that in your portfolio... It's not, well, it, it might not keep you from getting a job, but it's definitely not going to be the reason why you get a job yeah. uh, because you did so well on the tutorial. Because ev every recruiter knows, because they get however many applications a day, that that's from the tutorial. Mm -hmm. And that obviously doesn't mean that you shouldn't, uh, that you shouldn't mean, <laughs> Jesus. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't do <laughs> tutorials. <laughs> um, but it means that maybe if you're still doing tutorials you're not at the right spot to applying anywhere anyway so by the time you want to apply somewhere you've probably have enough cool stuff in your portfolio that maybe you can delete the the tutorial from it mm -hmm. that's what i did for example like i i made private all of that kind of stuff because yeah, yeah. it just wasn't good enough anymore yeah, it, it, it again depends on what you do with the tutorial, right? Like if you just follow yes. it step by step and you get that nice end result, like it's it's cool and it's nice to look at, but yeah. everyone's going to know that you followed this tutorial. Like I have, I have done a handful of interviews myself and talked to artists that want to that wanna get into the industry. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of them where they they either want to try to hide the fact that it's a tutorial mm. but you can just instantly see it like yeah. it's it's the hand grenade or the military radio or the akm you can just yeah. instantly see it yeah and it's totally fine like you said if you just want to get get to that skill level but again don't follow it 100 percent. take it that one step further and try to apply it try try to apply those learnings on your own project basically exactly it's it's just being like, like not being one of a thousand is a it's, it's such an important thing right so when someone a recruiter looks at your portfolio or maybe the, the lead artist whoever does it mm -hmm. they they have two minutes to look at your portfolio and then they move on to the next person yeah yeah and of course if if you have the most generic stuff in there you're not going to be remembered like either that generic stuff will have to be like the best most amazing lighting and perfect textures and insane modeling but at the same time it's like it's super performant whatever like it has, it has to be technically perfect mm -hmm. for them to notice you and i think even then you, like you can shoot yourself in the foot so much that even if you have this perfect, technically perfect thing that you worked on, if it's boring, still maybe you won't, like, you won't even be remembered. Yeah, yeah. Because so much hinges on just that first impact, right? Yeah. That's also, I wrote down that thumbnails are really important to capture the attention. Because you're, you're most likely you're on our station. You're going to be in between the sea of amazing work and if you want to stand out from the crowd like you need to step up your game when it comes to thumbnails creation and just have it's kind of weird to say it but it, it turns it into um 
it turns it into like the the YouTube stereotypical like <laughs> thumbnail creation thing, right? Like, yeah. oh yeah, make your thumbnail stand out. But it 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 is kind of true because you yeah. wanna you wanna capture that attention. And I do also realize that in most cases, you're you're not gonna get discovered by a random recruiter just browsing ArtStation. But there are a lot of art artists that are on ArtStation and. I've, yeah. I know a couple of people that are just like, hey, I found this guy's or girl's work uh, yesterday. Um, what do you think? And then they bring it up to the lead and then the lead is like, yeah, yeah, I think we should go for it. And then if, they, if they're looking for a job, we'll just reach out to him. Right. Like, I think, I think there's this, I wouldn't call it a misconception, but it's like this, this weird kind of thinking where everything goes through this rigid system where once you're inside of a studio like i don't know you can just discover people's work like hey i know this this friend of mine or i saw this this person yesterday like their work is fucking crazy and like let's let's well i know that we have an open position so let's bring it up sure um i i just want to um say something to the point where you, you said something like yeah you're probably on art station mm -hmm. um and I want to say, if you're not, then get on it. Um, yeah. Because your own little portfolio website that you pay for, um, there's no point. <laughs> yeah, you know I, mean? I think like, I, I think we're in we're in a space where all recruiters use ArtStation, and they're so used to going through that format that yes. any other format is detrimental to how they perceive your work. It's just time consuming. They they have to. They know how our station works. They know. Oh man, I can't speak today. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good morning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so they know that. Okay, when I click on this guy's name, I'm gonna have a list of all the stuff he does. Yeah. And I can click to the left to go and, and to the right to go to other stuff, and I can scroll down to see more. Mm -hmm. Right. And then they go onto your portfolio website, and it's like this 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 and this there's like a weird fucking thing maybe it doesn't work right and then it's like the thing is in a different place why they only have two minutes to look at your portfolio mm -hmm. they're not even gonna see a single picture because they don't know how your fucking website works yeah, yeah so just get on art station don't be cool about it don't be oh i have my own website yeah nah. well nah. this is the thing right like i still have my own website like i yeah. i still have my own domain name that i pay for it but it's I'm also not in a position where yeah. I'm I'm actively looking for work or um Yeah, how should I say this? Because the the reason why I still have a domain name is because I've I've built this sort of or I'm trying to build this sort of brand around it where it's like, "Oh, that's my name." Like if you look up my name, you're going to find that instead of ArtStation. But on the other side, yes. I do also realize that if a recruiter were to stumble across my work it's highly likely like probably 90 percent of the times they're gonna stumble on my art station first instead of on my public domain yes i'm that's the thing your website of course you know i'm not completely trashing websites even though i am um <laughs> i i i would say for for the people that would be listening to this podcast that's the people where i would say you don't need an own website just get an art station you know what i mean yeah, yeah yeah like there's there's definitely reasons to have your own um your own website and like whatever it might be mm -hmm. but i think for someone coming out of uni working on their portfolio you don't need to have like i think it's detrimental actually to have a website instead of an art station mm -hmm. you can have both maybe i don't know why you would when you're just coming out of uni but you know sure. yeah, yeah. So I yeah I, I'll I'll just say jump on the bandwagon get an art station it's yeah. it's and great e and even the templates that art station offers right they're still made to be fluid like they're still yeah. easy to go through and all that stuff so true there there is still a benefit to having that but then <laughs> to your point as well like if I if I see an artist that I don't know you can really tell that they use Wix or whatever. And it's oh, just right. like, yeah. oh my god, no, I don't. It's just the same thing. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to go through this. And 
this is from uh, from another artist. Like, I will probably still look at your work and just get over the fact that it's that it's not really going as smoothly or that it's made on another website. But a recruiter doesn't have that time. Mm -hmm. So they will just look at it and then it's like, oh, where do I need to click next? And you've already lost them. Like, right? You, you're yeah. you're vying for that split second attention and just being like. They open up the site, they want to click on the next thing, just scroll through, have all the nice pictures, and that's it. Sure. Mm -hmm. and just make it as, as easy as possible for people to, to access your work. That's basically what it comes down to. Yeah. Um... Because, yeah, that's, that's always like a big thing, right? Like people... People, people are having this debate online whether you should use ArtStation or not, but I think... I don't think it's even a debate anymore. I think it's just I don't think so. if if you if you don't use ArtStation, you're just uh, handicapping yourself. Yeah, I uh, I agree. Yeah, and that, um, yeah, go ahead. No, uh, just coming back to that uh, uh, unique bit, right? Like uh, being unique. Mm -hmm. um, of course, if you are an ArtStation, again, that means that you know you you're gonna have to somehow stand out in a way. Yeah. Even though you know when you're when you're applying somewhere, they're hopefully hopefully not going to be looking at other people's art station while they're browsing yours. But um, but of course, just just like I said, it's always going to be a thing about people are looking at two hundred applications a day. Let's say you need to be special in some way, and that's why if if for example, when I was thinking about um, making a gun. Uh, which I, I've done a couple of times and I like making guns. At, at, at the start, I was making stuff like the AKM from the tutorial and then uh, like an M1911 and what, like, I think a, a Walter PPK, mm -hmm. like pretty like classic guns because, you know, they're cool classic guns and they look nice. But then I realized, yes, they're a classic and they're also all on art station 500 times already <laughs> yeah. or more probably yeah it's like they're classic they're stereotypical and there's also like ten thousands of them exactly <laughs> so what i did for example with that was my first crazy trick was just making more or less like a like a meme gun right like my my sawed off shotgun yeah, yeah. Uh, is pretty much a meme gun and it's actually it was actually like great practice because I was able to make the shotgun, but then also like do the whole cool scope thing and model all of that. And mm -hmm. it was a really great, uh, great like learning experience yeah. because I and had I, to do with so much stuff. And I do yeah. want to add on to that. Like uh, I was talking to to a person from our community, to to Tim, and he. Uh, when I think when we were starting to to set up the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, I was saying like, oh yeah, this is the person that we're going to do the podcast with. And that's the first thing he pointed out. It's like, oh, that's the guy from the Son of Shotgun. That's fucking crazy, man. That's <laughs> <Right>. awesome. <laughs> so see, that that's already like a, a sign of that's that's what you did to stand it's out. It's working. Yeah, and yeah. it's working. And that's the thing. So I like, if I look at the, the shotgun now, there is so much that I see that I would like to make, like to do a bit better. Because there always is, right? If, mm -hmm. if you're looking at stuff from when was this two years ago, um, but this thing still has like, I mean, we said likes don't matter, and that's true. But for what we're talking about right now, like how like how many people have seen it and stuff like that, it is it is important, I would say, in a way, like because it it stands out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This means it probably stands out. It's it like this is by far my most liked thing, yep. like 700 likes. Even though this is from two years ago when I didn't know what... I, like, I looked at the UVs of this and there's some <laughs> some stuff that I was like, oh, man, what I was what was I doing there? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Will made some um, bad UVs. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so it's... Um, so that's the thing. That's that's the thing that you have to understand about ArtStation. It's, of course, it's about great art, but it's also about cool funny whatever new things yeah it's, so, it's like we we said before it's like taking that extra step to stand out from all the rest because yeah you're absolutely right when it comes to likes that it 
the likes by themselves don't really matter that much, but it does give you like an indication of yes. when people share it around and how much it gets seen by other people in the community, mm. thus increasing your chances to get a job as well. That's yeah, and 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 if it if the general public is more interested in it, then maybe recruiters will too. It's it's not it doesn't uh, like likes don't help you get a job, but if you get more likes, then uh, uh, yeah, like you said, it might be an indicator that you've done something good. Yeah, and and it it, might, it will yeah. also help you stay on trending longer and and all that kind of stuff. Like the social media yeah. aspect of it does kind of play into it even though a lot of people don't like to admit that but yeah it's it, it's it's a very small part i'd say yeah or not, or it's not very but it, it is a small part of it but yeah i mean if you if you if you get more likes obviously it's cool it's great mm -hmm. but that's i think a lot of people have to understand that that's not what they're doing it for right yeah yeah well there's it, like dirty tricks that people use to get more likes and i hate i hate that stuff yes exactly that that was exactly what i was going to bring up too it's it's i think the main thing here is that you should focus on what you want to be known for and it ties into like a point that i that i wrote down and it's building your personal brand even though it sounds so markety but that's kind of what you're doing with your portfolio too you're trying to sure. establish where you want to be in the industry and what you want to be known for so yeah if you if you can keep it within your quote unquote brand and do something unique that's still going to capture a lot of people's attention, like the shotgun, is a perfect example. Because it doesn't go into, what would you call it, like meme territory or like joke territory or just being, being edgy to get likes. Like it's still mm. a professional object, right? Like it's still something, sure. something yeah. that, that, that serves a purpose. Definitely, yeah. And uh, yeah, I think... If you can find that balance, then you're in a good spot. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, like you said, there is definitely a balance to it. Um, there is, yeah, you want to be, yeah, 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 because you don't want to be known as, like, just, just the guy who, who makes, like, joke stuff, right? Who, like, puts a, puts a sniper scope on a banana, and that's all, like, that, that's his whole portfolio. Yeah, yeah. Like, you want, you... That that can be like because, one of the things. Yeah, that, because then yeah. then you're landing in like joke territory, and it mm. it will get shared around in the studios and all that stuff. But it's never gonna cross the threshold of like, look, we need to get this guy, or yeah. I shouldn't say never because yeah, 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 there will probably be studios that are like, look, this guy this guy is funny. This guy knows how to do do his stuff. So let's let's ping him a message. But yeah. I would say in most cases you want to you want to maintain that balance between professionalism and standing out also we've been we've talking a lot about um unique uniqueness uh and uh th that's definitely a really important thing just like 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 we said before right you need people to look at your stuff you need to stand out there's thousands of people applying for the job you want to be special uh, but of course, doing like making like something that's funny isn't the only way to stand out. Just having a fresh idea, like if you if you make an environment and you you I don't know, there's something I don't know. Maybe you mix two times and there's like uh, a Victorian era London, but there's a spaceship that landed in it or something like that. You know, just like fresh idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's kind of Doctor Who-ish. <laughs> uh, I don't know. But still, it's, it's not something that you yeah. see that often in 3D, right? It, so. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's just... Um, I mean, I'm making a Tokyo uh, a Tokyo street, which it's not, not the most original thing, to be honest. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but enough about me. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, no, I want to see you build up that point. <laughs> <laughs> no but um i think it is it is always a good idea to maybe stray away from stuff that's been done a thousand times if you don't think that you can bring something new to the table yeah yeah um, well that's the thing right like even with a with a tokyo street scene 
you could mm. add elements to it where it's like, oh, this is uh, a dichotomy between what a traditional street is like, but then instead of normal bikes, you have like hover bikes or whatever. And you yeah, could... I've got normal bikes in mine. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you can use that idea if you want. <laughs> Thanks, man. But but no, it's it's like one of those things. Like there's, uh, you can always get something out of it, right? Like if yeah. you if you just combine, um, this this movie with this scene, you're gonna create something completely different. Right. And yeah, it can it can be it can be good or bad, but you never try if you never know, right? I think the other way around, but yeah, I agree. What do you mean, the other way around? <laughs> you said you never try if you never know. I think it's the other way around. You never know if you never try, but oh, otherwise I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but then, so, uh, let, let's keep going. So, of course, the best way to stand out, I would say, is with your quality. Standing out just by having better quality than other people is probably the best way to stand out, I would say. Because yep. it'll be the most helpful to getting a job. Mm -hmm. But I think that's why something something like that shotgun probably helped me a lot is because it's it's an eye catcher. Yep. It's that's the thing that people see and then they click on that and then they see, oh that's funny, that's interesting, and it's and it's you know, it's it's good technically. Mm -hmm. It's it's not it's not the best gun it's not the best render it's not the best texturing it's 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 solid though like it's enough it's enough to look good but oh yeah this was two years ago so maybe in the last two years this guy has improved so let's look at the rest of his portfolio and then they see my other stuff yeah it all maybe... went downhill from there crazy <laughs> 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 exactly <laughs> exactly no but it's, then, it's true though like yeah you you want it's true that well, i went no downhill. no yeah, not that <laughs> <laughs> it's um you you wanna you wanna have a thumbnail that captures the attention right mm. but then the actual project should, should be like oh this is well executed because if the yep. thumbnail is only gonna do that first part no one's gonna stick around or no one's gonna share your work if it's not well executed right yeah and then and then um if you have someone on your on your site like on your art station page um, and then they look around and then they see, oh man, this other stuff is like amazing. Like it doesn't even have to be that one piece. Of course, it's great if, if they if they look closer and they're like, oh, this isn't just a meme. This is like a really well executed thing. Mm -hmm. But um, also, yeah, if you if you can get them on your site, uh, like or if you can get a recruiter to stick around on your portfolio page for a little bit longer and they they, they they take the time to look at the stuff more closely maybe just because you have something interesting on there that's a that's a big win yeah yeah for sure and i think what also helps with this is you need to show focus like yeah. you 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 have your portfolio and this is something that i did pretty early on like if you go and look at my portfolio in our station my personal work is the thing you open up with and then the second tab is my professional work like oh, you have it like that you yeah the sideways it's, thing yeah it's it's something it's something that i did on purpose because my personal work always showed like full scenes like i did all the lighting i did all the setup i did all the modeling did all the texturing and that's that's stuff that i'm proud of and that's that kind of shows where i want to be at some point that i can do all these aspects and then the professional work is more how would i say it? like it's more checking the boxes right oh this is like your you worked on this project this project this yeah. project and that's cool yeah. so they know that i can be um that i can still be useful in a, in a pipeline <laughs> right um yeah so that's that's how i set it up um and i think that's also something that i that i discovered early on is that i always wanted to focus on complete environments like I kind of like doing all the different aspects and I never made any excuse for it. So I would just, when I, when I do a project, I would just don't jump around between modeling and then texturing and then lighting. And I just liked every aspect of it. Um, so I think to take this back to how you can apply this to your portfolio is 
if you have a stereotypical portfolio like we discussed before, you have, I don't know, a character, an animation assignment, an environment, a gun, like all that stuff is on there. Try and pick the stuff that you're most interested in and have that on the front page. Yeah. I mean, you can do this in so many different ways, right? But the thing that I keep thinking of is that um, you want to show off what you want to do for eight hours a day. Yes. Like your your best work can be on display, but if you don't like doing it, then why are you approaching a studio to do that kind of work for eight hours? Like it doesn't doesn't really make sense. Like tailoring your portfolio for the job you want. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Is, that's what you want to do. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's a really important thing as well. Like like you said, when you when you do all the generic stuff that you had to do at uni, and then you have like your one character that you needed for that uh, for that thing for that uh, assignment from from class. If you don't want to be a character artist, maybe just remove it because it's probably not going to be the best anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and then why are you showing it? Why are you showing a mediocre? character that won't help you get an environment job but might just have them like have them look at it and be like ah this is not as great maybe we don't want this person yeah exactly like i think in most cases unless you're like a jack of all trades and you can do it all well then but that's only one percent i i think i met one person in my career that was good at all the aspects right like and I and I don't talk about aspects just for environment art. I mean, um, that person was good in programming. That good that person was good in in characters, good in environments, and I'm not that good at programming, man. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice way to run away with all the praise. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, after what you said about me before, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I, I gotta sweeten the deal again, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, but I, I agree. It's so this this topic is always really hard for me. Um, the whole focusing your portfolio thing, mm -hmm. um, because I find it, yeah, I find it very difficult to um, to make a general rule out of it. Yes, it because, is because yeah, because there is stuff. Like, how, how specific do you want to get, right? So, for example, my portfolio is props, environments, and guns, which isn't the most focused you could be. You're, you're probably a lot more focused than I am. You've, you've, you've only got, like, full environments, right? You, or maybe a prop here and there. Well, but even, even that, just talking about that, is probably less focused than what you do. Because you tend to stick to the modeling and texturing part. I mean, you have to do some lighting mm. as well, but... right. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. You can all, yeah, that's the thing, right? You can also, uh, mm, like, even though maybe my I have like guns in my portfolio, which you don't, my mind could still be more focused because, yeah, like you said, I'm not trying to do like lighting and post effects and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, you're right. It's it's like that's why it is it is so hard for me to 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 give like a great general statement about it yeah but well um, well this is i i totally agree by the way like i know that i kind of gave like a general rule before but that's only because from from my experience as as a recruiter and just looking at looking at other people's work it's how would i say it? like it's it's so confusing when you see all the different aspects of yes. what they want to do and then it's then they have well then the title of what they want to do is like oh environment artist but then they don't have any environments and I'm just like yeah what this is this is so confusing to me because I think you you don't have to separate them off in like separate folders right you can still have everything on your page but then mm. if the headline says environment artist and your environments or stuff that's relevant to environment art is on the in, is on the top row that could still be fine too that still mm -hmm. works but then the the second row is like your your a couple of characters maybe an animation exercise that shows like your extra skills and i think that's totally fine too 
as long mm. as you define what you want to do and then if a recruiter or another artist comes to your portfolio and is just like immediately like okay this is your name you you want to be an environment artist and then the top row is like environment art that's cool and then there's still interesting stuff happening on the second row sure yeah that's it's, yeah it's it's so hard like you said like giving like a general rule you can put it in you can put it in different folders you can do it on different rows you can delete it completely uh it kind of it kind of depends on the quality of the the pieces i would say yeah i think at i think starting out um deleting or making something private is probably the best way to go yeah to be honest because if you're just starting out then each piece you're gonna make is gonna be a huge improvement anyways mm -hmm. it's gonna be such a leap in in quality usually at least and that means that when when you have stuff that you're not even sure about like if it's good and if, if it's good to have it on because of the because it is a character let's say then it's it might also just not be good enough from a quality perspective anymore so yeah, I think especially when you're when you're in the in the phase where you're just applying to get a job, it's the best thing you can do is is be a little bit more focused and like you said, pr like prepare the stuff that you want to show uh, and that you want to do for eight hours a day, and then you can you can start being a little bit more uh, adventurous and be like, hey, I'm gonna try out something. I don't know something different like i'm gonna do a character in my free time where i'm gonna put some stuff on my port on my portfolio that i wouldn't necessarily use in an application mm -hmm. but it's i mean we talk about this we've talked about this before too right that at when you're in the industry you can like your the way that i look at my portfolio changed yeah because it's not it's not like oh yeah this is what i like yeah i'm, I'm not looking for a job actively at all mm -hmm. yeah so it's like it's not it's not that oh yeah this is my, my my like my business card that i give to everyone and it needs to be concise and they need to know exactly what i'm doing now my my portfolio is more like a collection of stuff that i've done uh and that i that i like mm -hmm. like there's still like some stuff on there like that that probably shouldn't be on there but i like it so huh you know who can tell me who can tell me uh, to, to take take it off if i personally like it so <laughs> but yeah exactly like that is i know i know that you you mentioned it as well like we keep bringing it up but it's such an important point like it's it's often hard to know as a student how it's gonna be in the industry so mm. just try to follow what you like the most like in my case, that was environment art. And who knows mm -hmm. where you're going to be in five years. Like you can still pivot once you break in. But yeah, I think the the most important thing is just uh, breaking into the industry and just getting that foot into the door. And then from there, you're, you basically don't have to worry about all the stress and all the, uh, yeah, all the, all the extra pressure on your shoulders. No. Yeah, exactly. Oh, there's, um, there's actually another thing. I think with the with the coming up of mega scans and all these mm. all these free asset packages on Unreal Engine, what are the limitations of using those things in your portfolio? Because in in especially last uh, what is it last couple of months with the with the open access to to mega scans, if you're using mm -hmm. Unreal Engine, I would expect to see a lot more mega scan environments coming from students as well. Yes, I definitely have. Yeah. Yeah. So, how how do you think students should approach that? Oh man, this is such a hard question for me to answer, <laughs> um, because yeah, I've I've seen I've seen a couple artists um that that i you know that maybe i i i i've known them for a bit uh, i've i've seen what they what they've done it you know like earlier um, and I, I wasn't impressed let's say and then they what, yeah, what they, do you mean they, just by the use of mega scans 
compared no, no, to no, the just like in, no, no, before before they did that. Like I wasn't the president. You know, they they weren't like the greatest artists. Oh, whatever. okay, yeah, yeah. And then sometimes it can be used as like a crutch to just fill your fill your 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 scene up with like you know some some broken fallen trees and some grass. Um, yeah, it's it's basically the the old trick of oh I I didn't really like that that asset that I made or like the baking is wrong so I'm not gonna light it properly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but but of course it can uh, like if you if you're already a good artist and you just need to maybe add some stuff that you don't want to make yourself like I don't know I don't want to. I don't want to make grass. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to make trees. I, I totally understand that. Then it can be like a perfect little addition uh, to to an already good scene. Yeah, but it yeah. shouldn't be like the crutch that everything you do hinges on. If you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Uh, then I also wonder on the other side of that, where say the the amount of level artist jobs in the industry. From my perspective, is growing because we keep on we keep on to build like bigger and bigger worlds, right? And more detailed worlds as well. Like they don't have to be bigger per se. So, I think there's going to be a lot of level artist jobs that uh, that the industry is going to need. So I always wonder how that plays into that. Like if if they can see that you can build a good composition, you have an eye for uh, the narrative, the environmental storytelling. And you didn't make the assets yourself. Maybe you might get a job as a level artist. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, it's it does it does strike me weird when you don't have any of the supporting skills, mm. like like modeling, because like sometimes you're in a position when you can't rely on the stuff that's handed to you from like the massive library that you have access to and you have to build stuff yourself. So what are you going to do in that aspect? So I don't know, like this, this is more like a, a, a random thought that I have, but it, I'm, I'm curious, I'm curious where that's going to go because I do agree that there's a lot of mega scan stuff out there now that it's not looking that great yeah you, you yeah because because the fundamentals aren't there right? yeah exactly exactly if it's if 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 it's just if it's like a, a guy that knows how to do a cool realistic environment but they just need that one little uh like that 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 one tree to make their scene mm -hmm. complete um then yeah sure you go for it put 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 the thing in there obviously credit it don't don't pretend it's like you you made it yeah because then um, it turns into one of those situations where it's like oh you made this akm hmm i've seen that yeah. on a tutorial before <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> it's like yeah. no no i did it it's like nah come on man <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then so yeah it's, it's 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 it can be a good addition but it shouldn't be what it shouldn't be the main the yeah main part yeah exactly because that is that is the thing like if I've seen it in some artists even where they enable the use of mega scans, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't, like you said, like it shouldn't be the main thing that you want to use. Like you, you have this scene and you want to have some nice foliage coming down from the walls. Like oh, just get that foliage from mega scans, just save you the hassle and just say that you use mega scans for the foliage and just be done with it. But it's, mm. it's going to elevate your scene and you're not going to be spending uh, like a day creating good foliage and then it might not even look that good. So it might cost you points in the end. So especially, yeah, this is more applicable for artists, right? Like, especially if you're under time pressure and it's mentioned or you have asked that you can use mega scans for certain aspects, just make the most use of that. Like, mm -hmm. just look at what the... Uh, I think this is the most important point, right? It's just, what do you want to show off? If you want to show off that you can uh, build a good modular kit, then don't download it from TurboSquid and use that. Like, make it mm. yourself. Like, that's the skill you want to show off to 
um, potential hiring managers. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's definitely the most important point. Like, it's it's again leaning on the previous point of showing what you want to do for a job and then just doing that yourself. Like, they're not going to hire you if you're if you're replacing the thing that they want to hire you for with mega scans. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's it can it can carry you, but it can also just well, it can, it can carry you in a good way by adding that little little extra bit, but also, also if it carries you all the way to the finish line, <laughs> yeah, yeah. then uh there's like why this isn't even your artwork in a way, right? Like <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I was just about to say the same thing. It's it's like Mega Scan did the work for you. So then they can like they have artists in that company too. So why would they hire you? They know how to use Mega Scans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's it is it is such an interesting point though. Because I feel sometimes I feel like this is the same it's it's not really comparable. But sometimes I feel it's the same with the introduction of substance designer where everyone was doing their material spheres Mm -hmm. and then after a while you would get so bored of it and then from that whole group that did that like a couple of them really rose to the top and they're known for that stuff now i wonder if the same thing is going to happen with mega scans is that we're going to see like a flooding of environments with mega scans and then only the good ones are going to rise to the top and the rest is going to just fall off. But yeah, you're actually right. I haven't seen like a ton of uh, uh, shader shader balls all over mm-hmm. um, all over our station anymore. That's super... In- I've, 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 I didn't even realize it, but yeah, it used to be shader balls, guns, and uh, bikini girls. And now it's just guns and bikini girls. So... <laughs> yeah i i gotta be honest i don't tend to look at our station that much anymore so maybe Me neither maybe maybe that factors into the equation as well but um, yeah, but, but that's yeah. that's the thing like i only like that the people i know that do material spheres they're probably known for that they're the best of the best currently like daniel thayer yeah yeah exactly or, yeah yeah, like the the big the big names. Yeah, they stand out because they took it to the next level again. I think that's yeah. that's like a perfect yeah. tie into like our first point. It's just you have to be able to take anything, anything that's thrown at you, and just take it to that next level. Yeah, I mean, if you if you look at Daniel Feiger, for example, I mean, there's there's no point in even discussing how good he is. Yep. I mean. If you look one, if if you, if you look at his portfolio for one second, there's no there's no question, but um, but he has. Oh man, I'm going through. There's so many. There's so <laughs> many shader balls, and he's got them like he's got them like in a gradient of color that is so sick. Uh, yeah, he, right. Man, I mean, that's that's guy. the thing. Like he has a massive wall of work, and they're all good. Yeah, and then but what I what I was gonna say is mm-hmm. he he didn't just make shader balls with really amazing rocks he did but then he also made this rapier sword the substance designer rapier sword or the or the watch you know like he made stuff that isn't usually done in substance yeah and he he was like oh you know what i don't have to model a watch i can just uh make one in substance designer no and put it on like super basic geometry and that's I, i i don't know if he was the one who like started that whole thing probably not there is probably some some other guy um but you know that the, the for for a little bit of time there was this whole thing where people would like make a gun in substance designer oh yeah yeah you know what i mean like they it was just oh yeah this is just a plane but uh because of the tessellation and stuff i i can i can make it look like it's a it's a full gun and i modeled it but it's the the, the, the like then they show the wireframe it's just a plane it's not like that's Really yeah, funny. yeah. I'm I'm looking um, at this at this scene now from um, well, I'm gonna probably pronounce this wrong, but uh, Javier Perez, I'll send it to you, and uh, we can probably bring it up on screen as well. But you've you've probably seen it, like the substance designer hallway. 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Like, I mean, that's next level. That's not yeah. shader ball level anymore. Yeah. And that's like just to make it clear to people, like we're not um, shitting on shader balls either. No. Because like if you but if you just look at their work. And if you look at the shader balls that, that they do, like it's still, it's on another level compared to what yeah. other people do. All we're saying is that, again, they found a way to not only show off their substance designer skill, but show off their substance designer skill in a way that makes it interesting and unique and new to look at. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, man, this, this stuff is so crazy. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. I remember. Yeah, yeah, he did that too. He did. He did the axe one, the 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 Viking axe. That was that was by uh, Javier. I remember that now. So that's another thing, right? Like, it's it's a it's a new way to use that that technology and make something unique. It's 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 just yeah, just find your lane, find what you want to do for for work, and f like first of all, obviously master your technical. The whole technical thing, mm -hmm. but then find a way to to make it interesting for people to look at, and um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but there's one last point that I wrote down on uh, on my whole sheet here, and it has to do with the presentation. And I would say if this still applies, like open up with your best piece. Sure, it's uh, a yeah. it's it's a pretty simple one, but. It, it it ties into the whole thumbnail aspect. Like you want to grab their attention from the get go, and if they see your first piece, and it's like, damn, that's a good environment, and then they click on it, they go through it, and now they're interested in checking out your other work. Right. So yeah, there's a there's a lot of it that goes into this, like uh, the presentation of your portfolio. I was listening to uh, the Dynasty live stream that uh, Jeremy was doing this week and he mentioned at some point, he was going over a portfolio, I can't remember whose portfolio it was, but that you can kind of tackle it as Instagram where if you have four materials that you made for a scene, instead of them taking one slot each, you could kind of make it like one big shader ball that takes up like four thumbnails and then have them oh. have them separated on each thumbnail, if you know what I mean. Like every oh, thumbnail mean, shows like a quarter of the shader ball that's a different material. Wow, that is a sick idea. But but there's there's already people that that did that kind of stuff. Like um there's there's actually still something that I wanted to do and I've I've never done I, I always <coughs> like I don't know it's because it's so old because I have I have my old fantasy town that I used that I that I made mm -hmm. and I have three thumbnails for it because I've got the the actual town itself I've got all the materials and like breakdown thing mm -hmm. and I've got the eighty level article and um, they're all right now the thumbnails are all screenshots from different parts of the city but was I what well, what I was thinking about is having all these like having one big screenshot and then cutting it in three bits right so that it's one large panoramic shot oh well, which is like kind of the same thing yeah like yeah horizontally like one large thing but oh I because i i was about to say like i know a person that did it but vertically they had like a really oh, vertical scene and they took like three horizontal shots and then just had them in one gallery or like one page on art stations. If you scroll down, it was like one large screenshot. Oh yes. Oh yeah. That's another thing. Yeah, I, I was talking about inside, like with the connecting the thumbnails, right? But yeah, you oh, can also okay. have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you can also have vertical. Uh, yeah, like uh, I've seen it with guns, where they have like one, like super close up thing of the gun because they they turned the screenshot around, right? So that way you can have like you don't have to. You don't have to fit it on your screen. You can have it like really zoomed in all the time, mm -hmm. and that's yeah, that's cool too. Yeah, there's there's so many ways that you can that you can take it to the next level, and uh, yeah, so, some of them might even feel a little bit hacky and a little bit over the top, but uh, there's there's nothing really stopping you to try it. 
there's there's yeah. so many so many different ways that you can stand out just give it a try because there's there's even even simpler ways of standing out and this this kind of ties in with um your your own branding and your personal brand like one of the first things i did before making a, a portfolio was having my logo on there right and then as soon as soon as people saw that logo like they knew that it was my work and then all all the thumbnails of my portfolio had the same kind of logo so it was like creating this consistency between between all of your pieces yeah i don't have a logo per se but all of my um thumbnails except for the ones that i like the for for like games like that have the title of the game in it obviously like all personal work mm -hmm. um they 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 all follow the same structure they have the same uh font that has like the little thing on, on the bottom and then uh if you look at like all the late at least the latest renders that i did they all have the same kind of background with with my name at the bottom as well like it's uh yeah it's it's even though i've i've not focused on that too much it's still such a nice way of making your uh your portfolio look like um like one piece mm -hmm. right yeah i mean there, there's so many ways to do it like that's that's a good and simple example sometimes it doesn't have to be more it doesn't have to be more than that like it can just be like a, a font that is consistent and I like the spacing of it to be consistent like it doesn't have to be more than that that's a very good point so we're already at the 55 minute mark oh, um, yeah time flies man um especially because it's it's one of those interesting topics right like you can you can just keep analyzing and keep going through like other people's portfolio and how they do thumbnails like it's uh there's so oh many... yeah one yeah go ahead one quick thing about thumbnails there's a couple of people uh that do this and i've seen it like every you know every time i look through our station I, I i see it um it's fake fake thumbnails like uh, clickbaity stuff like i saw something the other day it was like a really good artwork um and it was it it, it looked exactly like a the last of us 2 screenshot with the title in the thing oh and, and then, then very small fan art yeah stuff like that i hate that shit yeah there's and then like that I, I don't know who it was by i don't want to call a name it was like uh um and it, it was a really good artwork but why why do it like that i yep. i mean i guess for me it's just like a personal ethical thing but i think i or i would hope that recruiters also if they see that they they're like a little bit iffy i don't know maybe not i, w I would say at least at least 75 percent of the people that look at that are gonna be like oh that's like the, the technical the technical aspect is still there like it's still a good scene yeah. but then it's just how you present it it's just like oh i i see what they try to do here and it just feels a little bit scummy yeah to me yeah for me it's i think yeah, a lot of know. people have that same reaction though and look to com to be completely honest like no one's give a shit if we have that reaction but if it's gonna cost you your job, then yeah. it becomes an issue. Definitely. I mean, I would just try to, yeah, try to to get the attention by having good <clears throat> quality and having interesting, uh, interesting like subject matter. Yeah, because that's the thing, right? Like, especially with that, uh, with that piece. Like, even if they just put it as big as the other type. Like if you would just read like, oh, the last yeah. one was two fan art, it would still be good. It was exactly, good yeah. work, but then you don't have the negative downside of like seeming that you want to hide the fan art yeah. aspect of it. Exactly. I feel yeah, yeah. But yeah that's, it's 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 like an extra little step that probably won't even help you that much. I feel like. Yeah, sometimes sometimes it's weird, but uh, yeah, some people make mistakes, right? And yeah. it's uh, it's good to go through it once, and then being like, hmm, yeah, that's not the good way to go. Yeah, exactly. Because I do, I do realize why they do it, but of course, yeah. you can you can achieve the same result by just being open about it. 
Yeah. Like there's there's no I feel I feel like there's no disgusting aspect or like no negative downside by just calling it fan art. No, yeah, fan art's great. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, because you want maybe... to show homage to uh, a world or like a series that you absolutely love. So there's I think there's fan art. Yeah, that. yeah, I think fan art's hard. Um, I think you shouldn't do fan art too much if you're not amazing at what you do because. Uh, if it's especially for video games because the stuff already exists in 3d yeah, yeah yeah so then you always have to be better or you have to bring something new to the table so i think it's it's definitely something to think about if you want to do fan art but if you've got the skills and you're able to make a really cool fan art then like it's i don't think it's it's a bad thing at all and if it's yeah. if you then want to apply at that at that place then even better yeah, because you're absolutely right. There's always a comparison point already. So you're you're kind of aiming to do better than what a full game studio already did. Or what you can also do is is instead of making it better or trying to make it better is giving making it like a, a unique stylized spin. version. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, stylized version or what if what if this scene is set not in Japan but in America, for example. So yeah, that's uh, that's something interesting to think about. Um, sort of going on with what I what I kind of mentioned before, and this is going into your personal brand and how how you put yourself out there. This is a question, like this is the Patreon question from the week from Antonio Dinata, and he asked the very short question of why change your artist name. And there's also a blog post attached to this where it's basically, how would you describe it? How would you summarize it? Because it's a, it's a person that was going by not his real name before, but yeah. then he, he, I think he was using a gamer tag before, right? And then he yes, was trying yeah. to mix that gamer tag with its real name so that the, the first name is his real name. And then the, the surname is the part of the gamer tag yeah yeah the gamer tag so what in my opinion what this basically comes down to is he's he's trying to balance anonymity with having um how would you call it? like a more personal name or like attaching yourself to your brand quote unquote right and I think it's honestly, I think it's a bad way to go. I feel, I personally feel this, that you should just be upfront who you are and what you stand for and what your work is and just be really open about it and attach your real name to it. Because if, if, if it's, if it's a career thing, yes. If you're just like some guy who, who treats it like a deviant art thing and just wants to, you know, Oh, I, I make this stuff. I want to put it up here. Sure. Have a, have a pseudonym, but. Yeah, if if it's if it's your end goal to get a job with that art, then I think it's yeah, but you really yeah, exactly because it's you're you're putting up boundaries or like bumps in the road for a recruiter to reach out to you and then get you on a project somewhere, and then it's like oh, I need I need to look at this guy's name, but then it's not his real name, but then we kind of need that information anyway if we want to hire you, so we're gonna know about it at some point yeah also if it's like uh i don't know like if i'm a recruiter and i i see a link to to the art station and it says like hey i'm the i'm the silver lion <laughs> you know that was like I, I, there was stuff, stuff like that you know or i'm the i'm the art i'm the art dragon yeah was that your name before <laughs> Of course, yes. Yeah, you're coming up yes, with those so. names pretty quick, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, um, I don't know. To me personally, it's just a little bit, I don't know. what. I guess it, you would call it, what would you call it, cringy? I don't know. It's just for me personally. Yeah, it kind of feels unnecessary. It's yeah, just like, yeah, exactly. why, why? why do you spend so much time thinking about all that stuff instead of uh, creating good art and just focusing on that? Yeah, put your freaking name up there. Yeah. Shut up. 
<laughs> I love it. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. You know what? I, I let's totally just, let's agree. just end on that note. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put your name out there and shut up. You heard it from Will. Yeah. <laughs> You heard it from the art dragon himself. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So I'm the silver lion right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, well. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I think we can end it right there. That's a good one. Um, so, yeah, this was episode 19. And thank you all for listening and sticking with us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Catch you in the next one. See you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the podcast. If you did, then you can check out the playlist on the right for more episodes and don't forget to like, subscribe or share with friends. If you're an environment artist trying to break into the industry or just looking to grow your skills, you can find a ton more resources like weekly tips, blog posts and more on beyondextend.com. But that's going to do it from our side. Thanks so much for joining us and a shout out to all of our Patreon supporters who made this possible.